to Digital Storytelling. My name is Sophie, and today I'm going to talk to you about building a cross-platform story. We're going to touch on the goals of cross-platform storytelling. I'll give you a couple videos to watch, and then I'll dive into some examples to get your mind going. So let's dive right in. So for starters, I'm going to clarify that I will use multiple terms like multimedia, transmedia, and cross-platform storytelling. These all mean the same thing with the way that I'm using them. It's just where multiple different medias are being used to tell the same story or aspects of the same story. So the goal of transmedia storytelling is to create an immersive, asynchronous worlds that extend over multiple platforms, each of them revealing a part of the story via qualities unique to the specific medium of communication. So in each bit of information you give to your audience, you want them to learn something new about the world you've made. And each bit needs to be emphasized and elevated because of the medium used. Such mediums could include films, video games, websites, social medias, graphic novels, live events. There's so many different types of mediums that you could use. Now, here are some very helpful videos that I encourage you all to watch. The first one is very useful as it easily explains what multi-platform storytelling is. Um, I would definitely say that it's one of the best that I have found so far. The second and third are both just, as they say, some prime examples of multi-platform storytelling that may help you figure out what type of project you'll want. I am going to provide this slideshow so you guys can also get to the links. So this is from the first video, but I wanted to give you a simple visual of how multi-platform storytelling looks. Each new medium is used to appeal to certain audiences, giving unique and immersive experiences. So for example, if the question mark is your main story, your main idea, let's say you turn it into a book first, so print, you're going to appeal to a reading audience, but there's so many others. For example, you could turn it into a film, which could reach a much bigger audience, and then, you know, follows a video game, which is gamers, and then you have audiobooks for listeners. All of these things are meant to appeal to specific audiences, but still give a great interaction. So, this is just another little thing. What platforms you use, how much content you create, and whether you fine-tune the story so that it is best enjoyed by a single player or by a community of participants will affect what kind of audience you attract and how deep into your story its members will go. This is from Philips Transmedia Creator's Guide to Storytelling PDF, which I think you all should have read by now. So the real question is, how will you develop your multi-platform story? Well, let's think. What are your strengths? You need to start by thinking about what interests you and how that can be applied to a multi-platform story. Do you want to tell a story via a video game or a TV show? Uh, did you see a TV show that maybe you want to convert to some other type of media? Do you want to solve a real world problem with advertising, with televised ads, a website, an app? What are your specific strengths that you can contribute to this project? Are you especially good with audio? If you're good with audio or video, maybe working on creating YouTube tutorials, editing video and audio while someone else creates the written content. If someone would prefer to create graphics, they can work on that. Or if someone is really good at web design, how can these skills be incorporated into a key idea? Now, I wanna give you guys a couple ideas on different types of multi-platform storytelling and how they look. We're going to touch on Game of Thrones and their transmedia campaign from the earlier seasons, how PBS makes multi-platform adventures, and a series of multi-platform experiences based on Michael Grant's book series, Berserk. So now for an example that hopefully everyone knows about, Game of Thrones aired its first season in 2011, and it's developed its transmedia presence significantly. For starters, let's take a look here at their main page. Notice the arrows on the main page, which takes into account the three types of design. The organization of information at the top, information design, the way which we can scroll down the page to find more that we want to know, or how we can hit the drop-down bar of the top tabs for similar information. 
There's the social media buttons displayed in a line block of their own in the middle of the page rather than at the bottom. This is interaction design, but this is also creating a gateway to another type of media where the story might be continued. Maybe you see sneak peek photos or a sneak interview. You never know what kind of things that you could find just by going through other types of medias. All of these things they have fine-tuned over the years, so the website is more engaging for new viewers and current fan base. They really want to make sure that everything that you're seeing on the main page makes you want to learn more, but you maybe just don't want to read everything. Maybe you want to watch a video. You want to learn more about the cast and the crew. You want to read through the blog. There's so many different types of things that they've provided. So using digital strategies, Campfire, the marketing team in charge of campaigning for Game of Thrones, utilized transmedia and sensory design so that fans could experience the world of Game of Thrones through each of the five senses. They pulled from social media and fan-based activities to promote the show and gain a better following. For example, they created a banner generator. You can go to a website and create your banner, a house name, your house motto so that you can feel included and empowered. All of this was combining, you know, this fan base and really taking it to the next level where they are interacting directly with this Game of Thrones content. Fans are encouraged to tweet their thoughts and feeling on, feelings on episodes using hashtags, which draws media attention from all platforms. Game of Thrones is really utilizing all different types of media and ways to draw in their audience and grow their audience base. Now take a look at what these fans have done. Beautiful Death is a website via Tumblr, which focuses on conveying the most iconic deaths of each episode of Game of Thrones into creative graphic artworks. This kind of thing is really unique. I don't hear about Tumblr near as much anymore, but they have created these types of sites, which give a good self, not self promotion, a better promotion for Game of Thrones. You have the house motto generator, as well as the banner generator, which we talked about. The last image is from Twitter with people tweeting about the Red Wedding. The great part about this transmedia campaign is that it is mostly fan-based. The marketing team does a lot of work to make the world of Game of Thrones interactive and allow fans to have creative room, presenting the characters, settings, atmosphere, and universe prior to the broadcast of the first, e first episode is one strategy which was used. Now, for those who are more interested in maybe an educational or a more playful route, think about PBS Kids' multi-platform campaign. Parents didn't really want their kids to be glued to the TV. However, there is a perk to televised education. Kids can make connections with role model characters on the show and even learn lessons from them. So they endeavored to create a multi-platform learning experience for kids of all ages. This included a TV series, a phone app, parental resources, and a website. The main characters on the slide here at the far right are Peg and Cat, two characters from one of PBS Kids TV shows. You might also recognize popular PBS icons, such as Arthur who taught us life lessons, and Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus who taught her students about nature, the body, the universe, all these different unique scientific things through her out of this world field trips each episode. So here we can see PBS's main page for Peg and Cat, a show that's been airing since 2013. Notice the different media element options on the main page. Play games, watch videos, activities, apps. There are multiple options that can cater to different needs. When traveling, kids can play games on apps. If a teacher wants to use a video, wants to use a video, they can likely find it. Additionally, there's the local TV school TV schedule menu at the bottom, and parents can find resources at the top of the page. There's multiple things going on for one main page, but it is organized in a playful layout reminiscent of Peg and Cat's show. Additionally, it's clearly labeled for key elements that a young child could find what they want. 
All aspects of the main page for Peg and Cat guide the user to a different media to learn more about either Peg and Cat or through Peg and Cat. This is the iPhone information download page for PBS Kids Games. So you can see it is more animated and cartoony, a different look than the main page. The colors are more vibrant. The user can see that there are tons of game options. This can appeal to parents who are constantly on the go or for parents who don't want to download multiple games to one device so they can download a singular one. So from what we can see, PBS has really done a great job of reaching across different types of medias to get the same type of message, the same storyline going, but each one can be used for a different time or different kids or a different situation. All of these things are very good to think about when you are developing your transmedia multi-platform story. And finally, here's an option for those who enjoy books. Similar to how Game of Thrones was adapted from a book, Berserk was originally a trilogy written by Michael Grant, a dystopian novel based around controlling the world through one linked and utopian consciousness. Berserk is based around the resistance. In 2011, Berserk broke from, it, broke from its printed media and became an online multimedia concept. So the main things that happened was it became a game for the PlayStation, and also recently it's taken to the phones where you can control these biotes, you can control the motion, the speed. This story is slowly taking off to where it's branching across other types of media and becoming more interesting for newer and maybe more technologically savvy generations. So after all of this, what are some ideas that pop into your head? Well, what interests you? Sports, TV shows, art, technology, health, social justice? What problem do you want to solve? And what can you develop that can help solve the problem or advocate for the solution via a multi-platform technique? What kind of story have you been dying to tell? I really encourage you to think about these kinds of questions as you start thinking of different ideas to propose, for your groups um, or for your final project because that's what you're ultimately working towards is your final project and you really want to make a story or a concept that you are going to enjoy and that you don't mind learning about. Well, that is all for now. I hope that this helped give you guys some ideas and open your eyes to multi-platform storytelling.